Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and welcome back to another review, and this time, uh, I was thinking of saving this for a Bruce Willis marathon, but wanted to talk about this film, Tears of the Sun. Now, this came out in 2003, and I actually saw this in the movie theater. It was a good time in the theater. Actually, around this time, I was going to the theater almost on a weekly basis. I mean, I saw Terminator 3, The Matrix sequels. Kendrew Jack even, Darkness Falls. I believe The Hunted was that around, I think it was that year. Pretty much I would go to the theater almost on a weekly basis and whatever's there, try to pick something. And this was one of them. Two thumbs up from Eber and Roper. The best military thriller since Black Hawk Down. The film grabs you and won't let go. I don't, know, I don't know about the best Bruce Willis action film since Die Hard from Talking Pictures, but who the hell is Talking Pictures anyway? I mean, I would say I prefer The Last Boys Down and such. Die Hard sequels. Well, Die Hard 2 and 3 and 4. But Tears of the Sun is a pretty damn good film. It's a Bruce Willis movie no one talks about, so I would say this is a bit underrated. The film bombed, unfortunately. I heard they had like a hundred million dollar budget. I don't know why. I don't know how. I mean, I'm not saying this film looks cheap, but a hundred million seems very excessive for this movie. So either those fats are wrong or something else was fucking up in this. But it takes place in Africa and Ni Nigeria, turmoil. The president and his family have been murdered. Bruce Willis has a team of U.S. Uh, Navy SEALs. You have Johnny Messner, I believe his name, who's in the sequel to Anaconda, and he's been in quite a few films. Nick Chinlin, Cole Hauser. You also have, I forget the guy's name, but he's the bad guy in Tears of the Sun. Not Tears of the Sun. <laughs> he's the bad guy in Blood and Bone. And he's the guy on Bruce Willis' team as well. And I'm looking up the cast info. But I thought all of them worked well. There's not a lot of like backstory or witty banter or character development on the team. But at the same time, just the bit of chemistry, presence they have with each other works well. And considering the situation they're in, there just wasn't time for big character development or scenes of huge revelations on characters. I thought it worked well enough for the film. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Monica Belushi, who plays a doctor, who they're supposed to go in, get her and maybe a couple people out of there, mainly her. And again, that's played by Monica Belushi. Like I said, Cole Hauser, you have Iman Walker, who is the bad guy on Blood and Bone. He's one of the guys on the team. Yeah, Nick Chinland and Johnny Messner. And you have a few other people. And Johnny Messner, I know I've seen him in other films. I think he was in, yeah, he was in Anaconda, The Hunt for the Blood Orchid. Oh, yeah, he was in Running Scare with Paul Walker. That's right. And, oh, he was in Hostage with Bruce Willis. That's another one that's a, a bit underrated, Hostage. That's a good one. Yeah, at this time, Bruce Willis, a lot of films he was doing, he was actually in The Equalizer as P&E Worker. I don't remember who the hell that is. And Nick Chilland, he's a guy I remember on episode of The X-Files, like a really weird guy, uh, Donnie Faster, I believe. It was an episode called Irresistible, like he would, he loved the hair and just you know, abducted Scully and... I just remember him being very creepy in that. Yeah, he was in Con Air as well. He was the guy that got the bunny and Nick Cage is like, put the bunny back in the box and Nick Chinlin and him have a fight and Chinlin dies. He's one of... Oh yeah, and he's also in the Chronicles of Riddick. He has tombs. He's one of the guys on the team as well. It's about total, about a seven-man team, including Bruce Willis. Tom Starrett has a little supporting role as a, ca as a captain that sends him on the mission. Actually, one of the main bad guys, I can't pronounce the character's name, 
not the colonel, whatever, but the guy sort of beneath him is Peter Mensa, who is actually one of the main voice actors in the video game for Dead Space, the first one. And also, he was the guy in Jason X. I believe Broad Steve, the cool, badass guy who fucked up Jason, threw him right into the atmosphere, guided him right into the atmosphere, Broad Steve. He's actually one of the main bad guys in the film. So, there's a couple recognizable people going into this. And I should mention, this is directed by Antoine Fuqua, who did The Replacement Killers, which I'm going to review sometime, because that has a Chow Yun Fat. I know someone told me the actual pronunciation, but I like that better, to be honest. Just easier to say. And Antoine Fuqua did Training Day and Olympus Has Fallen. And you also have a music by Hans Zimmer, which was nicely done. It fit the film well. It wasn't just a carbon copy of the scores he'd done before. Really well done score. Fit the film like a glove. And I know Antoine Fuqua and Bruce Willis did not get along. Well, first of all, I know Bruce Willis had a deal where he would do Die Hard 4, but then part of the deal is that I think one of the alternate tiles was Tears of the Sun for Die Hard 4 in like the early stages. I don't know, maybe that was the... I know at one point a Die Hard 4 was going to be Bruce Willis in the jungle and that they're on a, he's on a trip and something with other people and it crashes down. They have to survive with no guns and survive on the wits. It's kind of, kind of weird. Uh, granted, not a carbon copy of a Die Hard film, but you know, kind of weird. I, I liked how it played out. It's like, no, I don't want to do a jungle movie, but I want to do Away from Die Hard and use that title, Tears of the Sun. And then, of course, Die Hard 4 became the Free Die Hard, which I do enjoy. Saw that in the theater. And I well, Antoine Fuqua and Bruce Willis did not deal along with each other. And afterwards, they said they never worked with each other again. And Antoine Fuqua said Bruce Willis was a pain in the ass. Boy, what a surprise! Does I you hear that all the time? Kevin Smith says he was a pain in the ass. It was so crushing to work with him on Cop Out. I believe Rowdy Harrington had problems with him on Striking Distance. Even a good guy, Fabio, he mentioned how he met Miko Hughes on Mercury Rising, and he said, "Yeah, he seemed like a dick with the director of that film." And then he, I believe, he also met or someone else met. Uh, What's his name? Tom Atkins, who was in Striking Distance. And Tom Atkins said, yeah, he seemed like a bit of a dick, especially with the director. So on Striking Distance, I know he had a bad relationship with Tony Scott on The Last Boy Scout, as well as Joel Silver. So, Last Boy Scout, Mercury Rising, Striking Distance, Cop Out, this movie. I swear, I mean, of all the action stars, he seems like the guy who pisses off directors the most. I wouldn't be surprised if Richard Donner came out and said he was a dick on 16 blocks. I mean, what the fuck, Bruce Willis? But Bruce Willis is good in this movie. And this, is a, this is a time where his films were not doing well, unfortunately. Because it, Hostage is a good one. This is a good one. I think the next hit, actual hit he would have was probably Live Free or Die Hard, which was 2007, I believe. And then Red. I think that was 2010. Which I liked the first Red. The sequel I thought sucked. But anyway, I'm going all over the place not talking about this. This is a very straightforward film. This may be five minutes that could have been chopped out because it is two hours straight. But that's only a little nitpick. I actually like that it's a bit straightforward, meaning it's just here's what's happened in Nigeria, here's the team, Bruce Willis and his, and his Navy SEAL team, they go in, Dr. Monitor Belushi, they're only ordered to do that, Monitor Belushi won't leave without the folks there, you know, someone says go with God, and Bruce Willis says God already left Africa. And you see some of the turmoil that these people go through. The indigenous people and in that region. 
Especially when they get to a sequence where they go into a village and they help out fucking up bad guys and you see Granted it's not as horrific as say Ramble 4, which about about five years after this. But still, I mean, you feel for the characters and you feel for what's going on. That's helped by the solid work by Antoine Fuqua and the camera work, as well as the very fitting store by Hans Zimmer. Again, it's another top-notch store by Hans Zimmer that no one really talks about. But I wouldn't say it's my favorite. Broken Arrow would be my favorite. But this is one of his best ones, I would say. I mean, Hans Zimmer's made a lot of great ones. Days of Thunder, that's a great store. A lot of good ones. I mean, pe nowadays people only say, what was it, the Dark Knight films or whatever the hell it is. He's made score, more scores than that. And to be honest, I like these more than the score to the, those Nolan Batman films. I prefer these. Again, that's just my opinion. And the locations in Africa, they look great. Uh, I actually don't know where exactly they shot it. If they shot in Africa, they might have. Well, I should have looked at the features. Journey to Safety, Making Tears of the Sun, to see where exactly they shot it. Um, so that's my fault. But there's a commentary from director Antoine Fuqua, Writer's Observations, Voices of Africa, Deleted Scenes, Africa Fat Track, and Trailers. This is, this is a film no one really talks about. And I did, like I said, it bombed. It debuted at number two. It got beat by Bringing Down the House. A fucking Steve Martin, Queen Latifah comedy. Which made double on opening weekend than this. This made like 15, 17 million. That made over 30. A fucking movie that I did not see in the theater. I saw on DVD and it sucked. Steve Martin, he's white, so he's uptight. He's old, he's white, he's uptight. And Queen Latifah, she's black, she's sassy. Ugh. Get it? Because I'm a black woman, so I'm sassy. And I'm convicted as a criminal. And I need an uptight white guy to help me. And I woke up and I punched Steve Martin in the face. Who dare? Who dare? With my crazy hair. And I'm funny for that. And that made more money than this. That made over $130 million in the U.S. Bringing down the house. More like bringing down on my balls. Because that's how it feels. That piece of shit movie like that is a hit. But this fucking film bombed. And I saw it in the theater. You can't see what you should support. I did. It pisses me off. Shows it doesn't matter if you pour in the theater. There's good films to flock to. This is a pretty damn good one. And I mentioned because this is a film no one talks about with Bruce Willis. Their training seemed fine. Being trained as in the tactics. They seem like a team that were unit, efficient, were not bumbling around. The location they shot looked beautiful. They look real, not just a fucking fake looking set. Unlike Predators, I'm sorry I won't bring that up again because that looks like a fake looking ass set. I know it's supposed to be an alien planet, but if an alien planet means that I look like it's in a fucking studio, no thank you. Prefer this. Beast of Shadow Predators. But anyway, Mondra Belushi says she won't leave. Um, they have to kind of bullshit their way out of it, say, okay, fine. They go to this drafting point, have to stop the rest. Rebels on the trail. Bruce Willis kills one with a knife quietly. They get to this drafting. They get the doctor on there. He's like, wait, you lied to me. And he's like, we're not here for them, we're here for you. And as they're going on the helicopter, because that's their mission, and they don't have enough room on the choppers. They pass by the missionary that they left, and they see that there's a bunch of dead bodies, and very well-directed sequence. I mean, you see that it was not, again, I don't think $100 million seems like a lot of money, but it's a good-looking shot. A real helicopter hovering over a real village that looks like a bunch of dead bodies wiped out. A red, the blood is, I mean, uh, sort of the river, the water nearby, blood red, and... Again, Hans Zimmer's score fits the film well. Bruce Willis, he, this is when Bruce Willis could act. 
people will make, was he really, he's acting? Yeah. I mean, you can be sad or thinking without, no, I mean, you can do it subtle as well, and he says it all with his face. And I think this is a pretty damn good acting performance by Bruce Willis. I can say that without, oh, who gives a shit if people come after me for it? I think this film deserves a bit of, a bit of defending. Because again, no one talks about it. And that's what I like being here on YouTube for. And then Bruce Willis makes that decision, you know, let's go back. We're going to go back and calls, later on calls Tom Scarry's like, I can't leave these people here. We're going to take them on foot. We're going to put like the kids on the helicopter, take them over there, and then we'll take who's left, mainly men, a few women, and we're going to go to the border and get there on foot. And they, they ask for more choppers. We can't get them. It's a hot zone right now. Uh, they realize they're being trapped. There's a rat in the nest. And there's a guy they have to deal with who has a tracking device. And sooner or later they find out that one of the people among the group is actually the son of the president who was murdered. His, all his family didn't die. This one is the only one left. And that's why they're being chased. That's why these bad guys keep following them. So now they have something even more important to deal with. I mean, not only is it just keeping these people alive, but this guy is really the president of the country and who's there for democracy. But it's not heavy-handed. It's not Michael Bay. <laughs> it's not Michael Bay. That's the thing. This is, you just say hoorah for America, but this is not dumb Michael Bay style. If this is Michael Bay, fucking Bruce Willis be coming out of the jungle wearing a fucking flag. And there's only one person that can do that, and that's Rocky from Rocky IV. There's only one person that can do that. No one else can. But I'm sure if Michael Bay had directed this movie, hell, he kind of did with that fucking, I didn't see, but it's based on a true story, but that's Benghazi, where the fuck it is. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to see that. I'll just watch Tears of the Sun. I'm sure it's... A, and this comes from a guy that I don't hate all Michael Bay films. I like The Island, which I reviewed. I love Bad Boys 1 and 2. Fuck Bad Boys 3 because I'm sure you are going to get a shitty director like Joe Carney to do it. Fuck that guy. I like Bad Boys 1 and 2. I like The Rock. I like The Island. And yes, I even like Pain and Gain. That surprised the shit out of me to be honest. But I just mentioned Michael Bay because he would fuck this movie up. He... And it's not the hoorah yeah, America, fuck yeah. This is not done in a ham fisted style. This is not done in a Jesus Christ, what the fuck, embarrassing style. This has got a bit of heart to it. I mean, in the scene where they're on foot, they get to the village, is being attacked. Willis and his team taking these bad guys out with silencer pistols. And um, the Iman Walker finds that. There's this woman that's being raped, and she's actually had her breast cut off. And thankfully, we don't see, we don't, we see just enough of it, but it's not, it's not uh, Campbell Holocaust or anything. And you see what's going on, meaning like she's she's bloody. And to be honest, first I'm like, oh, she got raped and she's dying. And then we hear from dialogue of what happened. This is what how, what happens here. In Africa, this is what happens here, and they do it so feeding mothers can't feed their babies, and they even find a dead baby. And I thought Cole Hauser did a good job; has some good emotion as the Eamon Walker. It wasn't over the top. It wasn't oh so bad. It's funny. It was realistic in my part. The emotion. And you have a good moment. Bruce Willis coming out, and the camera, the camera circling him, but done more tastefully than say Michael Bay would do. It's really Bruce Willis surveying the death, the destruction of this village, and this is what goes on. And the music fits the scene very well. It's just a really nice shot. Um, and then it get into the finale where uh, you know they talk to Tom Stewart again via phone. He says a lot of enemies are converging on you. You could abandon them and get out your team out there and go faster. And Bruce Willis says, I'm not going to do that. And tosses him, I'm not going to do that. I can't do that. I broke my own rule. 
started giving a fuck. I want to hear what you guys have to say. And most of them decide, yeah, we want to help. I like that one guy says, you know, I mean, granted, he's being a dick, but he's being honest. Let's be honest, there probably would be one guy that says, you know, this isn't our fight. But he does try to help someone and sort of a little redemption thing as well. And previously stayed behind for this big firefight to help the refugees and get them out of there, get them to the border. And great musical score by Hans Zimmer in this sequence. Really rousing, gets into the action. Practical explosives. Uh, fire fight as they're trying to hold the line as these guys just keep coming. And it's not stylish type of action. It's not... I can't go mention Michael Bay or something else. It's, but it's also not shaky cam. It's not. I don't want to do it because I'll fuck up the camera. But the camera going do 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 and do 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 do. It's wide shots. Throwing a grenade. Here's a wide shot. People explode. Just basic. Kind of like I would see. Kind of like what I would see in an '80s action movie that took place in a jungle, but with the 2003 coat of paint which I appreciate and it's it's not overly stylistic and it's that's what I mean it's basic kinda of like the story is basic to the point and sometimes that can be refreshing it sounds stupid but sometimes I love style I love style but you can't have style 100% of the time sometimes it's okay to be just basic and and we can get rid of the fucking shaky cam just take that because that's not good at all. Just throw that in the fucking garbage where it belongs. And this this doesn't have that, thankfully. Antoine Fuqua did a good job directing. And I mean, I don't mind Olympus is falling. I like it okay. I would put this over that though. Uh, I I would. But I don't hate Olympus is falling. Sequel looks like shit, but uh, I don't mind the first film. I th I thought it was an okay film. I don't hate Olympus is falling. But again, if I had a pick, I would say I prefer Tears of the Sun over Olympus is Fallen. But uh, yeah, they have this big firefight. Well done. Um, some of his teammates getting killed. Bruce Willis gets shot. One of his men is down. He comes back for him, for his fallen comrade. Crawling, shooting. You know, get his buddy back home. Some planes to bomb the fuck out of the bad guys. And I thought the ending worked well. Him and the rest of his men come out, they're bloodied up. And it's nice, you know, the people thank him, they appreciate, but it's not done the ham fisted style. You know, one of them you know, thanks Bruce Willis for what he's done for them. A nice moments like but you you don't need dialogue, but nice moments list between the men. Who are surviving? You know, they did their job. They lost some men of their own. Go up to medical and via helicopter. And there's a nice um, quote: "The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good to do nothing." And it ends with that great music by Hans Zimmer. I, this is just a very solid, capable military action film. This calls a military thriller. I can see that. Military thriller. Military thriller action film. The cast works well together. Monica Belushi, she's a bit hit and miss, I will admit. Like, other than maybe five minutes if you're taking out of it, just five or so minutes, a little bit of the pacing. And my, Monica Belushi, I think she worked fine and I think she was in Shoot 'em Up. I, I think she worked fine in that, but not the not the actress that's the the most I would gravitate to, I guess. I don't know. I just probably would prefer someone else in that, and I, I'm sure there's a bunch off the top of my head, but just I don't know. Margot Blue, she she's okay, but I would prefer someone else. Just I don't think she's the best actress. That's just me. So, Monica Blue, she's there. P 
pacing just a little bit. Overall, when the f action kicks in, it's basic, it's simple, it's straightforward, it's not aggravating, annoying, busy, cheeky cam shit. Very solid score by Hans Zimmer. Good performance by Bruce Willis. Filmed in a very lush location. And it does what it's supposed to do and does it in a satisfying way. Has a good bit of heart to it. Good bit of emotion to it. It's not pretentious. It's not gun ho America fuck yeah bullshit either. It's just these guys are doing a job. And they try to do the best that they can. And I think if you haven't seen this movie and you're if you're in if you like Bruce Willis, if you like Antoine Fuqua, if you like action movies, if you like military thriller action movies, I definitely think you should give this a look. If you haven't seen it in a while, I should say give it a look. A film that's forgotten in Bruce Willis's his category. Which is a shame, because it's better than any of the shit he's done lately. I mean, I liked Red, but I do definitely say this is much better than that. And, honestly, 2016. Yeah. That's sad, Bruce. I mean, A Good Day to Die Hard, this is a lot better than that. I'd probably see. I don't know if I did a top 10 Bruce Willis films. I might have. And if I didn't put this on there, I probably would if I did it. I didn't. Because I love the fifth element. That would be right, way up there. I love the first four Die Hard films. And I love The Last Boy Scout. I really enjoy Mercury Rising. That'd be tough. There's a lot of Bruce Willis films I enjoy. This is definitely one of them. And this is, again, one of his more underrated movies. That's just my opinion, though. But either way, thanks for watching. Take care, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.